Alrighty then. What you're looking at here is a gimbal head for a tripod. This particular brand is called Neewer, N-E-E-W-E-R. Bought it off of Amazon, paid 80 bucks for it. There are some you could spend a lot more money on, like 200 plus, and there's a few you can spend less, but this one had the best reviews. Came in at about 4.8 thereabouts. 72% of the people gave it a five. They, they, they really like this, it's a, it's a nice build. It's very robust, powder coated aluminum. Everything fits well, it's very well machined. There's one comment that seems to run consistently through a lot of the, a lot of the reviews and that is that whatever the manufacturer used for a lubricant is really sticky, really high viscosity and it makes these moving parts very sluggish. And when you've got a gimbal head, the whole reason for getting it is you've got smooth panning, smooth rotating. You want that to be a seamless transition from, from rotation to pitch up or pitch down. And, and it's a, if it's a little stiff, you're not gonna get that. And that was the problem with this particular gimbal head. Too thick a lubricant. So a lot of guys are taking this apart cleaning it out, putting in a thinner lubricant like silicone, lithium grease, a few others are putting other, other lubricants in there and, and having great success with it. Significantly better success with it than when it, than when it was new out of the box. So I decided to give that a shot. I first mounted this on my tripod, put my big heavy camera set up on it and it didn't work bad. I mean, my camera setup is heavy. So the heavier, the better, but it still wasn't as smooth as I thought it would be. So I decided to take it apart. I did that earlier today, cleaned it, re-lubed it, put it back together, and it works phenomenal. So what I want to do is I want to deconstruct that process, share it with you guys, so in case any of you are a little bit um, reticent to take it apart, you're not sure that you can do it, blah, blah, blah. It's not complicated, it really isn't. Um, I'm gonna go through this process and it won't take probably five minutes, okay? To show you how, how that whole thing works. So, and let's go. We loosen this uh, thumb screw, take the bracket off, turn this knob, rotate that arm up about 45 degrees, set that down like this. This hex head bolt is the whole project. That's the thing that everybody talks about as being a bear, and I'll tell you what, that sucker is on tight. I'm not some wimpy guy, and I'll tell you what, I applied all my pressure and I could not break that nut free. I was a little hesitant to push any or pull or whatever any harder because I didn't want to strip out the head. And now it's got a pretty good depth to it. So this drops in there pretty well. I don't think I'd have stripped it out, but this doesn't have the tightest fit. This is probably a metric, a metric opening. I don't have a metric to fit that. I think it's a six millimeter. This is a seven thirty seconds. 30 second uh, wrench. So it fits in there good, but there's a little bit of play, a little bit of slop, but it worked, okay? But here's what you have to do. Boil some water on the stove, three or four cups of water. Get yourself a, a little bowl like this. Set the tripod head in there like that. Pour your water in there. And now that boiling water is gonna sit, it's gonna heat up the part. It's going to break down some of that viscosity of the lubricant. It hopefully will break free whatever is holding that bolt so tightly in place. And I left mine in there for about 20, 25 minutes as opposed to uh, others who have tried this. Um, in fact, there was a guy who has a, a YouTube channel, which is where I saw this being done. And he held his in a boiling pot of water for 45 seconds. And he had success uh, doing it that way. I just didn't want to hold it over a pot of boiling water. So I thought I would just soak it and let it soak longer. <clears throat> and so I took it out, dried it off. Had it got a good grip on it like this. Put my wrench in there, held on to it, and I applied a moderate amount of force and it broke free. And it was, uh, it was a stiff back out, but it, it came all the way out, no problem. Now, since I've completely redid this entire gimbal head. 
this comes off real easy. I mean, I can thumb and finger, I can unscrew that. It's no problem there. So there's your bolt, hex head. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna take this knob off right here. <clears throat> what this knob does is a long screw, a really long screw at the end of this knob, and it threads down into this, um, into this bracket here. It's hollow, and there's a ram inside of here. So the screw pushes on the ram, which pushes on this base, which snugs it up or loosens it up, whatever the case may be. So you take this off. Okay, now you've got this sleeve on here, all right? I just use the crescent wrench because it's what I, what I had available right away. It's like not even, a, not even a quarter of a turn and this thing's already loosened. So this is not on tight. This is not a problem. You can just unscrew that with ease. This has got a little bit of thread as well. There it is hollow straight through. And in here is this stainless steel ram I was telling you about. There that is. This is what it looks like. Okay. And now you can remove this base plate right there. So when you pull yours out, it won't come out that easily. It's gummy. It's sticky. It almost looks like a glue. The, the um, a lubricant is so thick. So you'll want to clean that all off of there. You'll want to clean all that lubricant that's in here. You want to remove all of that. And then what you want to do is re-lubricate it with, with a thinner viscosity lube. And this is what I used right here. It's called Lube Tube. Um, I use it for all my moving parts and my O-rings for my pool equipment, my pump, my basket, my whatever. I use this exclusively. It doesn't dry, it doesn't crack, it doesn't yellow, it doesn't harden, it doesn't break down in the heat. It's waterproof is perfect so put a little bit of that on this piece right here put a thin coating inside this housing put that back in place like that and then you just do the reverse of what you did to take it apart this ram I put a thin coating on that ram put that back in there and then Grab this threaded sleeve, put that back on like this. It's really easy. Not a whole lot of parts to this. And what you're going to do is going to make a huge difference in its performance. Crescent wrench back on. Just snug, that's all. Put this back on. And I'm going to snug this up all the way so it's tight. <clears throat> like that. And the reason I snugged it up is so that I can put this screw back in here without that base plate turning. If you don't snug that up, that will turn. All right, put this in here. And I'll show you a little something here. I'm gonna snug this up a little bit just so it's finger tight. Now I'm gonna loosen this up and, and, and what should happen is this should spin very freely. And it does, but it's really stiff. And the reason it is, is because this is a little bit too tight. So you just break that free. Whoops, tighten this down. And just break this free a little bit. It's a little too tight, like that. Okay, loosen that back up. And that, that spins three times smoother and easier than it did when I took it out of the box. That's phenomenal. Really nice. So if it's a little bit tight, just loosen a little bit up on this nut. It's not wobbly or it's not going to fall out of here. There's plenty of thread and it seats in there really well so it's not going to come out. But that acts like a, almost like a tensioner. And so you can just, you know, turn it a little bit. If it's a little too tight, that's going to make this a little tight. So you loosen that up. Now it's beautiful. Okay. I'm going to snug this back up. Now we have this entire arm configuration. So what we're gonna do here, loosen this up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this same, same hex head wrench, by the way. 
and this was not tighten that up here this was really easy to break free this was not like that not like that bolt that we had to take out on the base this comes off really easy so see this here so you can see it I'm just kind of spinning this like this so you can see this better okay so there's that literally just take it off with your fingers and right behind it you've got two flat head washers and sandwiched in between is a bearing right there and that's you want to keep lubricated okay mine's already re-lubricated with this lube I showed you I'm gonna put this aside right here and now this arm just comes straight out and when you take yours out it's gonna have that really thick stringy gooey lubricant you'll want to clean that all off with uh, mineral spirits paint thinner clean it thoroughly and then recoat it with a thinner viscosity uh, lubricant like this right here make sure you get all the surfaces completely coated be sure you clean out inside of this housing on both sides and then re-lubricate this interface right here this flat section here and re-lubricate that section right there and then this just pops into place here like that see right how they how they go right together so that's a real real important interface to be well lubricated okay so at this point here you've got the two flat washers and sandwiched in between is the is the um, bearing okay clean it off there a little bit I'm gonna put this right back in here and then I'm going to just Thread that in like that. Get my wrench and spin that in there till it's snug. Not to crank it too tight, just snug. <clears throat> Alrighty, and so the rest of the the play in this knob is just to loosen the arm. I'll tell you what. Didn't do that out of the box. It is super smooth. So there you go. If you got, if any, if you get residual grease on here, you can wipe it off with uh, with mineral spirits paint thinner. Cleans up real easy, and that's it. It's all. It's all it took to turn this really nice gimbal head into a phenomenal gimbal head as far as I'm concerned I don't know how much better the other ones are maybe they come like that right out of the box you don't have to do that but I'll tell you what for 80 bucks um, you can't beat it and I'm looking forward to trying it out so thanks for watching guys good luck